So this is the final part of John chapter 5. So we, we got the whole chapter over the course of three days, beginning with Jesus performing his third miracle in the Gospel of John. His third miracle of seven. There's seven miracles in John's Gospel, uh, which was Jesus giving a, a crippled man for 38 years the ability to walk. Rise, pick up your mat, and walk. And then yesterday we got into the discussion on the Sabbath because the uh, religious leaders are upset with Jesus because he did the miracle on the Sabbath. He performs work on the Sabbath. And Jesus' response in a nutshell was pretty much, look, the Father is doing work on the Sabbath. He gives life and he gives judgment. And we know that because people are born on the Sabbath and people die on the Sabbath. Therefore, the Father is even working on the Sabbath. And I'm only doing what the Father is doing. He's given life, new life to this crippled man. Well, that upsets them even further, because not only is Jesus violating the Sabbath in their eyes, but now he's equating himself with God. He's calling himself God's son. So that's even a bigger problem that we have. And today's gospel, like I said, is the conclusion of John chapter 5. You might say, you know, for our lawyers out here, right, you know, you might say, wow, it sounds like a courtroom trial. Well, that's kind of exactly how John, the gospel writer, writes it up. Right? This is a courtroom trial. Jesus is the defendant. The religious leaders are the accusers. And we, the readers and the listeners, are the judge and the jury. Is he the son of God? So let's put our judge robes on, and Jesus will give four witnesses for his defense. As he starts off with the gospel, starts off with a Jewish tradition that one who testifies for himself in his own testimony is not true. So Jesus is, is saying, well, hey, look, you, if you don't believe in the person's own testimony, I'm going to call four witnesses to the stand. Okay, and the first one he calls is who? John the Baptist. Right? John the Baptist testified to Jesus. John the Baptist in the beginning of the John, Gospel of John points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist says that I'm not worthy to unfasten the thongs of his sandals. And for a while, the people, including these leaders, were enamored by John the Baptist. But then eventually, though, they don't accept John the Baptist's testimony. The next witness is the works of Jesus, as he just saw a man crippled for 38 years, which means they knew who he is. They know his state. And yet they did not believe him. Then it's the Father himself, God the Father. Jesus says, you don't believe the Father because you don't love the Father. You don't love God. You don't know God. You know your your interpretation of things very well, but you don't know who God is. This whole faith, this whole practice of religion is really ultimately revolving around you, not around God. And likewise, the fourth, Moses and the scriptures. Same thing. You're not really reading the scriptures. The scriptures are kind of revolving around you. So with these four witnesses, they still don't come to believe, and we might ask ourselves the question, well, why? Well, Jesus gives us the reason at the very end of this gospel passage. It's about what? Seeking the praise of human testimony. Meaning that, that our Lord hasn't come to beef up the ego of these religious leaders, right? That he, he hasn't been doing that. His message to them is the same message to the rest of the people and the same message to us. To come to faith and to come to believe that he is the son of God, to lift us up out of our lowly state, to lift us up out of our sinful state, to save us and be our savior. That's his purpose. But if you're like these religious leaders with this high ego and you only seek out the people who are gonna bolster your ego, Seek the people who are going to praise you. Seek the people who are going to just say, hey, follow these guys. These guys are the, they're the leaders. Follow them. They're holy. They're religious. Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't do that for them. He calls them to repentance, just like he does for us. 
And that's why they haven't come to believe. And so this concludes John chapter 5. Tomorrow we'll pick up John chapter 7 with another Jewish feast day. You might say, well, what is it, Father? Well, you have to come tomorrow to find out what it is, okay? All right. God bless you.